Be honest, does the word automation make the hairs on the back of your neck stand up? When I work with clients inside of the Workflow Accelerator program, I always find that there is a resistance to implement automations in their agency. And I think that's because tools like Make and Zapier can be overwhelming for beginners. However, since Notion updated its automations, we can now create automations directly inside of our project management software. And I'd even go as far to say that Notion automations are easy to set up. So in this video, I'll be showing you five use cases for automations that you can use in your agency today. And by the way, these aren't just make-believe examples that I'm using in order to teach you how to create automations. These are real world use cases that I've implemented for other agencies paying thousands and thousands of dollars. So the first example I'm gonna show you today is probably the most useful, and that is auto creating all of the tasks that you need to complete for a new client project. So to show you how this works over in Notion, we have our client projects page. And if I was to create a new project now, so for example, let's just call this ABC Co and I can assign it a due date, but regardless of that or any of the information that is being set up, hopefully when I open this page and the template loads, you'll now see inside of the project page under tasks and deliverables, we have two tasks that have been created automatically, which is to host the onboarding call Oh, to prep the onboarding call and to host the onboarding call, uh, as, as well as some due dates that have been assigned. So the way this works is if we come over to our client projects page, any of the automations for database automations can be found at the database level at this Thunderbolt. So if we click the Thunderbolt, you'll see this opens up our automation menu. And the very first one here is the automation that triggered these tasks being created. So if I come to these three dots here and hit edit, now we have the automation menu and I'll just zoom in so you can see this. So first of all, we have it set to active and then at the top we have the triggers. So the trigger we had for this particular one is when the status has been set to onboard. And as this is our onboarding automation, it's just gonna set, create all of the onboarding tasks that we need for any client project. And then the actions, what's happening here in the do section is that we are adding tasks to our tasks uh, database and then we're adding all of these fields. Now, what's really great about Notion's update is we can now be very specific about some of the properties here. So obviously we can say what the task is, so prep for onboarding call. And then we can also say that it is related back to this client project. That's essentially using the self-referential trick, if you know what that is. Um, but all that basically means is when this task is created, it's gonna be assigned to that project so that when we open the project page, it lives inside of that page. But now we can say, uh, do some more things. The first thing I have here is actually being able to decide who the assignee is. And the way I've done this is actually using a formula. And so this formula essentially says, based on the trigger page, so based on the project that has been moved into the onboard status, I want you to find inside of the properties, the client lead. And so if I go back over to the um, properties here, you'll see we actually have a client lead property here. Now this isn't showing because it's currently a roll up, but if I was to assign a client portal, uh, just for example, this one, now I have my client lead in here. And so if that information is filled in ahead of time before this moves into on board, then that formula will trigger and essentially the task can be assigned to that person automatically. And you can do this for any person properties you have inside of your project page. So what I actually have inside of my own projects is a team section here in a Notion's new database layout. And so I can say who the client lead is, but I could also say who the designer is, who the editor is, who the social media person is. And so this is great for signing work automatically. So you can scope together the projects beforehand and say who is going to be the team of people working on this client project. And then based on that, when you move it into the onboard status, tasks will be created and they will be assigned to the people based on the people who live within these roles. So for example, if there was a task that always goes to whoever the designer is going to be, if John is listed here as the designer, he will be assigned the task. So that is a really, really powerful update that can be made using Notions and automations. As well as that, we have now the ability to say when the due date is going to be. So at the moment, what I've done is just said that I want the due date to be the date being triggered. So whenever this automation runs, whenever this project is moving into onboarding, just give it the date of today. But what we can also do, let's say for the host onboarding call, we want that to happen the day after. Well, this is what we can now do. If we come to custom formula, and instead of saying date triggered, we're going to add a date add 
action here. And now I'm going to say I want two days after the date is being triggered in days for this, um, this date to be added. And we can save that here. So now if I was to just quickly, quickly create another test project here, hopefully when we open this up, I can now see in my task section, I have to prep the onboarder call for today because that is December 11th. And then three days later, I need to host the onboarding call, which is December 13th. So now using Notion's new automations, we can be very specific about the set of default tasks that get put into any new client project and we can assign them based on the people that have been put together for that project. And we can also say when the due date should be based on what the rough timeline always is. Now it's great having all of these default tasks coming for our one-off projects, but what about our retainer projects where we may have some tasks that happen on a cadence of weekly or monthly? Well, now let's look at how we can create recurring tasks using database automations. So for our recurring tasks, we'll want to come over to our task database now and come to the automations here. And as you can see at the very bottom, I have a recurring tasks uh, automation that's been set up. And essentially what happens in this particular recurring task, if I hit edit, is the trigger is when the type recurring property is set to any of these options. So daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly or yearly, and the status is set to done then we are doing the following. And essentially we are creating a task in our task database and we are mapping information from the old task that was completed and creating a new task for it. Uh, but most importantly, the due date, we are basically using this formula here to say, if the type property was weekly, we're going to add seven days on top of that. If it was monthly, 30, if it was daily, one, so on and so forth. And so if you think back to our first example of how we were basically using that date add function to push the date forward from when the project was created, here what we're doing is based on the type of task of the, the recurring type, based on that, we're then gonna move that due date the original due date by that number of days. And so this makes a little bit more sense if we go back to an example here. So you can see we have one example of a recurring task that might happen internally, which is to um, complete the tax form. And let's say this happens on a monthly basis using our recurring type property. And at the moment, the due date is November 29th. So what is basically going to happen is when I mark this um, particular task off as done, it's going to trigger that automation and it's going to map all of these fields. I'm just gonna remove this for now. It's going to map all these fields to make sure the task is the exact same as it was beforehand in terms of assignee, um, if there's any SOPs, projects associated with it. Um, but most importantly, that due date is going to be pushed along. So let's try that now. I'm gonna mark this off as done and we'll see what happens. And now we can see that the complete tax form has been recreated as a new task. And we can also see that that uh, due date has been pushed forward by 30 days because the tag was monthly. So that is how we do it internally. But what we can now do is add this to our client projects automations so that we can have recurring tasks for our retainer projects. So just as an example, we have this website redesign automation and the trigger is basically when the service contains website redesign from our services database related to our client projects database, what it's gonna do is it's gonna add a list of tasks that are specific to that service. So we had one for our onboarding, now we've got one that's specific to this service. But what we can actually do is inside some of our tasks, we can use our recurring tag to now make that task a recurring task. So for example, creating a monthly ads report is something that we would probably want to do on a monthly basis for this particular client. Well, now we can add that monthly tag. And once this task gets created, it will be inside of our client project tasks but also when we check it off, it will then be recreated for next month. So let's see that in action. So inside of this web redesign project for Acme Co, we have the tasks here. We have task one, just an example task, but we have that create monthly ads report and it's been set to the due date of December 11th. But because it's got this monthly tag now, if I was to now update this to done, we should see the automation will trigger and then we'll also get this task being created for next month. And there we can see create monthly ads uh, report 
and that's been pushed over into January 10th for next month. For more complex projects, we may want to use Notion's sub-items feature to break our tasks down from big deliverables into sub-items or big phases into smaller tasks. However, there was a risk associated with this, using this in Notion before the new automations. And that was if you were to create the task anywhere else outside of the project by using the dropdown and adding it to that parent task, that task would not be automatically assigned to the related project. And what this means is if you had parent task here, added subtask number one, it would then not be associated to parent task project and not be found in that view. Well, now we can use automations to solve that issue. So as an example, let's say I have this home view where I'm linking to the master task database, but just showing things that have been assigned to me. And as an example, let's say we have this prep from boarding call that is associated with Acme Co on boarding. Well, before the automation, and let me turn it off so I can showcase this. Before the automation, if I was to come to prep on boarding call, and let's say I wanted to just break this down and say some of the things I needed to do. So task one and task Two, what you'll notice is in the client project section, these subtasks aren't actually associated with this project. And where that becomes a problem is if we come over to the actual Acme Co project and come to the book onboarding call section, uh, no, sorry, if we come over to the host onboarding call section, when we drop this down into the sub items, we don't actually see the sub items here. They don't appear here. So back over on our tasks database, here's how we fix that using that automation. So if we come to automations, we have assigned project to new subtask automation. And here's essentially what is happening. The triggers are when a page is added and when the parent task is edited. So essentially once a new uh, sub item is created and it has a parent task associated with it, which identifies it as a sub item, that's essentially what the trigger is saying is when a new sub item is created then we're going to do the following. And I've got this for multiple projects because I have multiple project databases in my particular system. But the first one we have here is set client project to my value. So essentially what I'm doing with this automation is I'm adding an action and I'm saying edit the property of, and then I found the client project relation. And then I've said to edit this um, particular uh, item by a variable. And the variable I've added in here is to map the trigger page which is the sub item that has been created, the subtask, to find its parent task. And then from its parent task, I want it to map the associated client project. So let me just walk you through this with a different project database. Let's say it's our content project database. And essentially I'm saying edit the content project. And instead of choosing another content project in here, I'm creating a custom formula and I'm writing that formula. So it's map trigger page finding the um, associated parent task, using our current action to find the content project for this particular example and mapping that over and hitting save. So that is essentially what that is doing. But once we essentially save that and let's turn this back on, if we come back over to our home option and again for that prep onboarding call, let's now create a third task that we want. Once that happens, hopefully the automation will trigger and we'll see we have the Acme Co onboarding projects being created for us or related for us, I should say. And now inside of here, we have in the drop down menu that task appearing. With automations, Notion can now compete with some of the more advanced CRM softwares. For example, what if we wanted to create an activity log that allowed our team to have visibility on exactly what had happened and when for a particular deal or opportunity? Doing this manually isn't realistic, but with automation, we can. So just an example over on our opportunities database, let's say we had a new lead for Acme Co that we have scoped out and assigned to one of our sales leads. But now uh, Acme Co has booked a discovery call with us. And so we have dragged this particular opportunity into our DC booked status. Now, if we open up our page, you'll see amongst other things, we have some tasks and things like that. But we now have an activity in here, which is showing that Acme Co was moved to the DC book status and that this happened on December 11th. 
So we're able to create a log of all of the things that are happening in terms of submissions, movements, calls, all that kind of thing using automations. And the way we do this, again, going back up to the database level, coming over to our Thunderbolt, we have here um, all of the different automations and a lot of these are for activities. So for our DC booked, what essentially is happening is if we hit edit, we are saying the trigger is pipeline stage is moved to DC booked. We want you to create a record in our activity database and we want to give it the following name. And what we're basically saying is the trigger page, we're using a custom formula here and we're saying that we want the trigger page, whatever that opportunity name was called. So the name of the opportunity plus uh, moved to DC booked. So that's the activity. We're obviously assigning it again to the opportunity project. So it's found within that page. And then what we also have over on the activities database is anything that has the discovery call template by default um, is given the event date or in fact, even the event date is just the created time in the full date format. So that's how we're getting the created time there as well. Hiring the right people can be the difference between your agency failing or succeeding. But I know from experience that hiring can feel like a massive undertaking. Well, here's one example of how Notion's automations can unburden you from that workload. So inside of our um, hiring project, we have one project here for a new sales lead that we're trying to hire. And in this page, obviously we have um, a lot more other things like hiring plans, job posts, tasks. But at the very bottom here, we have this can section. And this is where we can collect all of the people that are applying for this role and basically drop them along this pipeline we have here, which takes them from uh, a shortlist to a candidate task, to an interview and so on and so forth. Now, one of the things that can be a big burden on the hiring process is the amount of back and forth you have to have between applicants particularly if there's a higher volume of them. So here's one way automations can help you with that. For example, let's say John has gotten through to the interview round. Well, what we can do is now drag John into the interview status. And we have an automation here that's been set up for each of the different rounds. But for the interview round, essentially what is happening is when the status has been set to interview, we are going to send an email from our email and we are going to send the email to the email property inside of that candidate database. So the person who has moved into that round and we can now create a custom or we can create a standard uh, email, but we can customize it with some of the um, inputs that go in there. So the first thing we have is thank you for applying to and we now have a formula here that's basically saying uh, based on the trigger page, which is the candidate the linked job listing that was found in that relation. Um, so this would say, thank you for applying for the sales lead at Acme Co. And then the actual message itself, we are saying, hi, trigger page, and then the name of that trigger page, which is the applicant. So John Smith, hi, John Smith, you've made it through to the second round, and then a link to book a interview with the hiring manager and a link here. So based on moving from that round into that new one, we will now receive, uh, John will now receive that email. And even to show you this, what it looks like, we have the email. Thank you for applying for sales manager at Acme Co. Hi, John Smith. You made it through to the second round. Please book for an interview here. Best wishes, Sam. Now this video was just giving you some ideas for automations that you can set up. But of course, automations need to be associated with full working systems. And if you wanna see an example of that, you should check out my full hiring system inside a Notion, which as well as using that one automation for emails, has a few more automations that have been set up, as well as the overall infrastructure of how we bring in candidates, interviews, job posts, all connected together. If you want to see more of these videos, please do consider subscribing to the channel and liking this video, it really does help. And leave a comment down below to tell me what automation you think you will start installing in your business today. Until next time, bye-bye.